Well, blessings, friends. This is the day the Lord have made. We are rejoicing and we're glad in this day. I want to thank you for joining us for this very special edition of This Is My Story. We got a blessed man of God is going to be sharing with us today. And this is what I want you to do at this point. Thank you for waiting on us. We had a couple of technical difficulties, but we are here now live here on Bishop Andre S. Woods' Facebook page. Listen, I want you to like and share. I want you to start your watch parties. I want you to get involved. We got some dialogue, especially to our gospel music family all over the world. We want you to chime in and be a part of this conversation we're going to have today with the one and only Jimmy Russell of, out of the D.C. area, Washington, D.C., where he lives in Capitol Heights, Maryland, but born in Washington, D.C. Our good brother and our friend, musician extraordinaire, I mean, uh, talking about songwriter, producer, he's all of that, one of God's best drum majors that we've ever met in the world, and we thank God for him taking time to share with us today. I want all of you that are sharing with me, uh, that follow me on this platform to help me welcome my dear, dear friend and brother in the Lord, Brother Jimmy Russell. Blessings, man. Blessings, everybody. Thank yes. you, my brother, Andre. <laughs> yeah, man, we made it, Doc. We on. Yeah, we on, man. We on. We on now. Listen, man, I am so excited, and thank you for taking this time to uh, share with us today and uh, being a part of, you know, just something we're trying to do. The Lord gave me this concept while we were locked down during this pandemic. I said, man, we need to be doing something. Uh, stay connected with all our brothers and sisters around the world, and especially those of us that's been connected over the years in gospel music. Man, I'm excited to have you here because you're going to do all the talking and, and and you got a lot to share, man. And so I want I want our public, those that don't know you, that uh, be meeting you for the first time, even in this venue, I want them to hear your story, man. Because I mean, we go way, way back. We go so far back until it's further than way back. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Thank oh God my for God. the journey. Yeah, man, we, we, we've seen some things in our days. So we just Lord. praise God and bless God for the privilege that he allowed us even now. Listen, I want to share some information about my brother. Uh, uh, he got a 20-page bio, so I'm not going to read. Uh, <laughs> listen, oh, you got uh, 20 pages from me? <laughs> you doing all right. You got 20 pages from Jimmy Russell. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, born in D.C., Jimmy Russell, educated in the uh, uh, D.C. school system. What's that? Shad Elementary School, W. Bruce Evans Jr. High, H.D. Woodson Sr. High School, and uh, sang right. from 1975 to 1979 with the Howard D. Woodson Sr. High Choir Mel Course. You sung first tenor, Doc. Yeah. Bless your heart. Attended the University of District of Columbia Music Department, voice major, minor in music education, attended classes in directing and vocal warm-up training, choir decorum, how to advance and keep music department updated, how to have effective musicians rehearsals, bridging the gap between the music department and the pulpit from the following of music conventions, Gospel Music Workshop of America, Thomas Dorsey Convention, uh, Edwin, Walk, Edwin Hawkins Music and Art Seminar, John P. Key Victory and Praise Music and Arts. And listen, I want you to hear this impressive uh, 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 role of artists that he has uh, performed with. The Reverend James Cleveland, Reverend Donald Rails, Solo Salvation Corporation, uh, Minister Keith Pringle, Albertina Walker, Kurt Franklin in his early years, Bernard Rome. Oh, Gospel Music Mass Choir, uh, Gospel Music of America Mass Choir, uh, Carlton Burgess, my good friend, and Complete Praise, Kurt Carr and the Kurt Carr Singers, Thomas Whitfield, Linda Washington, and TACC, uh, P A U L. Now, who is that, man? That, that you got to come back and tell us who that is. The DC chapter 
of the Gospel Music Workshop of America and so many others. Uh, music employment, formerly Minister of Music at the Greater New Hope Baptist Church from uh, 1989 to 1996. Backstage manager for uh, all J Productions events as well as few Bible Way church services. Also had played drums for most of the churches in DC, Northern Virginia and parts of Maryland, Metro Baptist, Ebenezer AME, Metropolitan AME, Bible Way Church, DC Ways of Glory, Church of God in Christ, Shiloh Baptist, New Bethel Baptist. I'm getting out of breath, man. You, you've been spreading the joy around. And also <laughs> have directed and taught choirs and music, gospel music workshop of America uh, from 2009 to uh, 2019, Greater Tridstone Baptist Church Mass Choir, uh, 2006 to 2007. Seven Celebration Choir honoring the late Bishop Walter Hawkins, uh, 2009 to the present Assistant Director, New Covenant Choir, formerly the Voices of Inspiration at Metropolitan AME, uh, the James Silver Youth Celebration Choir, the Smallwood E. Williams Chorale, and the Pastors Choir of All the Bible Way Church uh, in D.C., Apostolic uh, Pentecostal Fellowship Mass Choir, my God. Listen, and here is our album appearances, the WYCB Community Choir, the Youth for Christ Fellowship Choir, the Gospel Music Workshop of America. I mean, you man, I think you did just about every year uh, from 1988 on. Uh, E.G. Records, executive producer, Ed Gerald, various artists, the adult choir of the Mount Zion Baptist Church played drums, sang background and produced the recording. Reverend Donald Vales, Salvation Corporation until the rapture. Carlton Burgess, complete praise, lift up your hands, 1997. Victory and praise, music and arts, mass choir featuring John P. Key. The Park Road Coalitions, both CDs. Voices, uh, re reflections on America, icon through word and song. Uh, the Corral Art Society of Washington, D.C. Oh my God. Performing arts uh, under the under the Lord, uh, hold on. That's the song, hold on. I'm sure, uh, or uh, look like it was a documentary or something, man. Y'all, y'all been, man. When did you find time to go to work? Uh, <laughs> P A U L, performing arts under the Lord, hold on. Uh, Gloria Allsep, Carter, uh, you were with with me. You were with me, Lord, all the way. Yes. My God, executive producer. Now here's your production uh, our credits. Jimmy Russell and OBC, Because of Christ, live recorded in 2007, uh, selected the producer, musicians and the session songs and arranged the songs, co-wrote and sang lead in background and served as uh, executive producer. Uh, as producer, the adult choir of Zion Grove Baptist Church in Frederick, Virginia, arranged parts, sung all the vocals, played the drums, produced a session in the studio. Recordings that he sung on Bible Way Church's National Mass Choir. Uh, first three recordings, Gloria Elsap, uh, Elsap, I guess I'm pronouncing that right, Carter, uh, the same song, You Were With Me, Lord, All the Way, Jimmy Russell, and Because of Christ, live and live too. My God, currently, Minister of Music of Bible Way, uh, these Bible Way Church, D.C., founder and leader of Jimmy Russell and Because of Christ, assistant chapter rep, D.C. chapter Gospel Music Workshop of America, member of the academic faculty of Gospel Music Workshop of America, Incorporated, National Convention, teaching gospel drums, uh, one and gospel tambourine classes uh, on adult and youth level, uh, since 1981, drummer for James Cleveland Chorus, Men of Promise, and the GMWA Mass uh, Convention, Mass National Convention, their choir, director of Smallwood E. Williams, Corral, Pastors Choir and Brotherhood Fellowship Course, Bible Way Temple, part of the Committee of the Songs of Heritage Month uh, celebration every September. Man, 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 I, I need to go get me a glass of water because you have done it. I am so proud that this brother is my friend 
we've been knowing each other. I mean, I think we are workshop babies. Yes, we are. Praise yes, we are. Lord. Well, you know what? Uh, yeah. You probably be more of a workshop baby than I would be, but you, you was there just a few years maybe before me because I came in around 79, 80. That's around the time I came, but um, I was glad. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what we were? We were there from, from King Solomon because right, from the beginning. I had to jump on you because it started here in Detroit. So we right, were there right. as kids, man. Uh, I remember that convention, you know, like it was yesterday, man. Uh, James Moore, uh, all, all, everybody was here then, man. I mean, the Craig brothers, yeah. I mean, even Maddie Clark was at that convention. Uh, Dr. Maddie Clark, and so many, Alma Hendricks, Lois Parham, all of the old greats, but we, but we don't want to talk about them. We want to talk about Jimmy. Man, listen, uh, 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 I knew you did a lot, but I knew I didn't know all of the intricate details uh, of all that you did, you know, and this, this, and I'm glad I got this bio in print. This is impressive, man, and I think uh, you will be able to, to today to share some things with some of our next generation and young musicians on your longevity, your stability, how you started, your humble beginnings, and what your journey has, has been like, you know, step by step to get you in some of these doors, like working with a Walter Hawkins and Edwin Hawkins and working with a John P. Key and, and being in the right place at the right time to play for the national choir of the gospel music workshop of america i mean take us back to the beginning man of of how you got started in music we want to hear in your own words okay um good afternoon everybody and um, i'm grateful to be here i'm also very very grateful uh that um, i'm here with my brother and i mean this my friend and my brother can't say it about everybody but i can't say that about bishop woods before he became Bishop Woods, always my brother, always my friend, always keeps it 100, which I thank God for him. And um, we're going to start with Jimmy Russell. We're going to start from the very beginning. Um, I am um, a ward of the District of Columbia. Uh, my mother had me on February 12th, and she surrendered me to the state. Upon that uh, time, my, um, my foster parents, Virginia and Edward Russell, who used to uh, take foster kids in from time to time, she looked at me and asked them about me and said, well, you know, you can keep them, but about three months from now, they might die. Cause I had a lot of health ailments, a lot of health ailments. And um, my mother said, no, I will take him. And so they took me and they kept me for 21 years. And um, when I finally found out I was a foster child, I was 12 years old. Um, but um, my mother used to always have a fear that my real mother would come back. But I told her, you don't have to worry about that because you're still my mother. It's the only mother I know, the only father I know. Um, when I turned 21, I changed my name to Jimmy Russell. It was James Coleman. Um, and um, coming up, I came up at the Bible Way Church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, where the late apostle Smallwoody Williams uh, was my pastor. And um, we had a church. Our church was the first mega church in the city of Washington, D.C. If there was any gospel to be sung anywhere in the city, they had to come to Bible Way because we had the largest church. We had a parking lot, we had sound, we had seats. And back then, when Reverend Cleveland and, and Roberta Martin singers and all those people would come through this way, even Evan Hawkins and Andre. But I remember Reverend Cleveland coming through many times and being there for the whole week, um, just singing um, and, and the Cleveland singers. And who would have ever thought, at least I never thought in my little mind that I would actually get to meet the King of gospel. So I'm going to move on up now. So now, I'm singing at the church, and my church was a very, uh, and still is a very musical church. So as I'm singing at the church, um, I'm paying attention to the drama at the church. Time was Teron Hill, 
Um, the next drummer was Brother Larry Adams. And I'm just watching them. And then I'm watching other drummers. Now, mind you, I'm still singing. So I'm singing. I first started singing um, outside of my church um, in my elementary school at, at uh, Bruce Evans, where Mr. Brown, who was the music teacher at the time, heard my voice. And he had to come to my house and ask my mother, could I, could I please sing uh, in the school choir? Because my mother is was a missionary at Bible Way Church and she did not play all that stuff. So my mother's old school. And so she said, okay, from there, when I graduated from junior high school, I went to Ella, uh, to I'm sorry, high school. And that's when um, Mr. Brown said, my voice would be great with the all male course that they had in the high school. Well, we were the first male course in the city as far as the school system was concerned. And this male course went overseas. They sang all around the city. And that's, and see, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to tell my age. I'm so old that I remember when we used to have, um, Walter Washington was the first mayor of Washington, D.C. I may have been about 19, 17, 18, or 19 years old when he was the mayor of Washington, D.C. So if you look at that, and that's back when we used to have something called home rule. Uh, the Congress would not let us govern ourselves as a state or anything, even as, a, as whatever we were. And we, they gave us our first mayor and he was black, it was Walter Washington. So I sang in the mail course for many years. Um, I still stayed at Bible and sang there. And I sang in one of the choirs called the Smaller Williams Chorale, which was directed by Raymond Brown. Now Raymond would take the chorale everywhere. So every weekend, I was traveling out of town. We would travel out of town to sing at somebody's church on a Saturday night, come back home, and then get up in the morning and sing for morning service. I don't know if you remember any of that, uh, Bishop Woods, but man, those are the days when you were younger. As you got older, you'd be like, oh, I don't think I need all that. But anyway, as I as I move forward in my, uh, in my musical life, um, um, I went to uh, UDC. And um, I studied um, uh, music there under, um, oh, I can't even think. I know Dr. Pearl Williams Jones, who is the daughter of my founder, she was one of the associate professors there. And um, she would always look out for me because I was from a home church. And um, I thank God for that because she you know, presented me with a few ideas. Um, even the first black gospel, I didn't say the first black gospel radio station, but for college, um, they had a, college um, radio station called um, WDCU and she asked me if I would like to be on it and at the time I was playing drums so much um, I said no I'm not gonna be able to do that at this time oh so let me go back I gotta re I gotta go back just slightly when I was 16 I finally took the plunge to play drums publicly so one of the services the small way Williams Corral had to sing at our church and I asked my drummer if I could play for the offering. And he said, okay. So I sat and I played drums and I made it through. He told me a few things I needed to do. Pay attention to your timing, listen, um, stay on the beat, all that stuff, right? So for three months, I practiced every Saturday at the church from like 11 o'clock to six o'clock, sometimes till eight o'clock just on Saturdays when nobody else was there. And I was there with a friend of mine, Lanair Holton, and he was learning how to play organ. I'm learning how to play drums. We listening to all the albums that are coming out, including Reverend Nix, Reverend Cleveland, uh, uh, J.C. White, and all of that stuff, Benny Cummins, all of that. And we learning from that. And as we kept playing every Saturday, we got a little better. So then I came back and I started playing at my church, but I would only play at the devotional part of the services. And I kept playing, I kept playing. And then one of the, um, the ministers of, uh, I didn't say ministers of music, but one of the musicians at the church was in charge of the young adult choir, excuse me. So he asked me, he said, hey, why don't you come and play for us? So I said, okay. So this was my first choir to play for at my church. Even though I was singing still in the Small Wedding Williams Chorale. He took me around the city with the choir and they, you know, sang a few places. He, 
uh, going up with, um, well, now he's a bishop, Bishop Joyner. Bishop Joyner took me, and I never thought the gospel could do this, but he took us into a club way before other people was going. And we actually did gospel in the club. So I was like, wow, I didn't know. That was back when gospel was just really finding itself. It hadn't really, it hadn't really moved to being contemporary. Oh, happy day may have come out around that time when I was younger. So, you know, and people in the church was really looking, oh, shouldn't be singing that song, but it was so much music coming out that was brand new and, and nobody knew what to do with it. Some people did and some didn't. So as I'm playing, I'm continuing to play with the young adult choir at my church and they had a workshop for the weekend. And for the weekend, they had none other than Reverend Donald Vales, my brother and friend. So I played through the whole uh, weekend uh, workshop for him. And um, he said, you know what? You really play good. I said, well, thank you. Now, mind you, I may have only been playing since 16, 17, about 18, 19 years old, 18 years old, when Donald had come to the church to do the workshop for the church. He said, uh, who else do you play for? I said, nobody. So then he says, I got a choir that you can play for. So he takes me to uh, Mrs. Shirley May K. Berkeley. And as I go to her, I, um, I say, okay, so what am I gonna do? Mrs. Berkeley told me what the deal was. And she says, we're gonna take care of you when we go out of town, but this is you know, what we do and this is our ministry. So I said, okay. From there, I grew and learned I have to say almost everything I know in gospel music through Mrs. Berkeley and the Gospel Music Workshop of America. Um, I was able to meet a lot of um, great people and a lot of famous people, people way before they became stars. Like Hezekiah Walker comes out of a Bible Way church in Brooklyn, New York from Bishop Huey Rogers Church. Well, I knew him when he was 12. We've been knowing each other every since and we know each other now. Um, Kirk Franklin, when he first came and he, he showed up with Michael McKay and he had me and Andre Woods play bass and I'm playing drums and we just doing a straight song with a soloist and Kirk playing piano. So the biggest thing on the song was the pianist and the soloist. And me and, and Andre uh, <laughs> Goucher, I should say, looked at each other and was like, what are we doing again? That, that's all it was. So Kirk and I became friends. John P. Key used to come to DC and be at Refreshing Springs Church of God in Christ. That's back in John's younger days. It was just me and John. And uh, he would come almost every year and the young lady, uh, Kathy, would ask me to come and play and I would play. Then finally, there became a, a community choir in the city that was developed. Um, when the radio station, WYCB, 1340 AM, um, came into uh, play, they wanted to really do something in the community, so they started a community choir. And I said, okay, well, I guess I'll go and play. There was a couple of other drummers, but they all dropped out, and I was the only drummer there to play. So then they did, there, and that was my, um, I want to say that was almost my, I think that was my first local recording I did with the WYCB Community Choir and they only did one album. Um, and um, we did that with um, Reverend Donald Vales and there was a slew of other people on there. Um, I can't name all the musicians, Willie B. Allen, some of them, uh, Greg Gibson, which I know that you remember, uh, 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 Tim Lindsay, uh, um, Danny McCrimmon, uh, Harold Sutton, uh, Linda, I can't think of Linda's last name, used to play organ. She still plays now. And we just had a, a, a and we had a large choir. Uh, Reverend Theodore King was over that choir. And I would play for them. Um, from there, um, my first um, time going to the Gospels Workshop, I want to say they were in Cincinnati, Ohio. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to do. I just went to observe. And um, I already knew who James Cleveland drummer was, um, James Galloway, Butch, Butch. And um, I didn't know that I could 
play for the Mass Choir that year. That's how new it was to me. And um, that year in Cincinnati, I got to observe the God's Music Workshop, the classes, um, the auxiliaries, the Mass Choir and everything. And I really liked this. So that same year, James Galloway called me after the convention. He said, how come he wasn't playing on anything? I said, I didn't know I, was, I could play. He said, no, man, everybody's supposed to get to play. What Reverend Cleveland says goes, which is, this is where everybody is somebody. So he said, so you get a shot. You just got to be good enough. So I said, okay. After that, that's when I started playing on almost every uh, recording um, from that time, I want to say in the, the 80s to close to maybe about uh, uh, 2000. Five or something like that. Four. I can't even remember the last recording I played on. But you know, I played for Gospel Music Workshop. I played in the city um, when John P. Key brought his um, convention to Washington D.C. Again, this, at this time we didn't have Ebenezer. At this time we didn't have um, our First Baptist of Glen Arden, which is a very large church now. It was just Bible Way. Bible Way was the biggest church in the city. So if you wanted to have a large concert, you would have it at Bible Way. And John had the convention there. And um, Michi asked me to play on the song that Alex, um, Alex from Philadelphia wrote and um, Butch um, Parham sung on. So I was very honored to play on that recording. And I kept on playing. And you know, um, what I'm gonna say, oh, my first recording for the Gospel Music Workshop was the last time the Gospel Music Workshop was at the Fox Theater. I don't know if you remember this, Andre, but we had, that was the last time we had the Gospel Music Workshop of America um, Orchestra. Yeah. That was the last time we had the, the uh, Gospel Music Workshop of America Tambourine Choir, which was about 50 people strong, right? Um, um, we had all the musicians. We had a, a mass choir of about 1,500. It could have been 2000 because it was Atlanta and everyone loves to go to Atlanta. And, um, and I got to play on this song for uh, one, of the, uh, one of the musicians from DC chapter that was accepted on a national basis, which was called Glorious is the Name of Jesus. And the DC chapter sang the song and I really love this song. But when I played on that the first time and I heard it, I said, oh my God, I got to do way better than this. And I was on a national recording. So I really had to bump my game up as far as a drummer. I really had to really start listening to music. But anyway, at that recording, Keith Pringle comes to me right after I get off stage and get ready to go back to my room because I was really frustrated with how I didn't really felt feel like um, I, I did a good job. And, you know, sometimes we got a lot of things that we do in the ministry. We don't feel that we do it good, but we don't never know how other people see it. Keith came to me. He said, look, I'm getting ready to uh, release this record, man, that Thomas Whitfield uh, recorded. I said, oh, wow. So he said, uh, and, um, but I got to go up to Connecticut and, and uh, New York, and I, I need a band, so I want you to play uh, drums for me. I said, for real, me? Now, this is Keith Pringle, who was hot at that time. Keith was, you know, doing, uh, you know, all the music of Keith Pringle and uh, True Victory and everything from that recording. And so I said, okay. I said, well, do you need a bass player? And he said, yeah. I said, okay, I got a bass player for you. So I called Greg Gibson. Uh, it was my bass player in the city, and I was my right-hand man. And um, this is how how um, ancient this was. So the recording wasn't released yet. We didn't have um, computers. <laughs> we, didn't have, we didn't have all that stuff, MP3s. So I had to record the song when they played it on the radio. I know ain't nobody else do that but me, but if you did, hold your hand up. Um, and um, I recorded it on tape recorder. <laughs> Greg and I sat down in my basement for about two hours, for three days, and listened to everything on um, um, Perfect Peace. And, um, and then we just ran through Keith Pringle music. 
um, um, Call Him Up and all those other songs. And um, he sent them, he, he sent us, uh, um, the, um, he made reservations, I'm sorry, for us to come and meet him that weekend. And on that weekend is when I personally got to meet this guy who was so phenomenal on the organ. And he brought these singers with him from Detroit, Michigan, by the name of um, Andre Woods, who played for one of my favorite uh, gospel music icons. Um, 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 oh Lord, your bishop name is slipping me. I, I, wanted to, I was gonna say Craig, but it ain't Craig, uh, Nix, Bishop Nix. And I could not believe I was actually playing with Bishop Nix's organist. And so he and I, we developed a bond and a friendship. And we had a great time that weekend with Keith. Keith Pringle, I loved working with Keith. Keith was about the business of music, ministry, and he ain't play. I'm just gonna just keep it 100. Yeah. People can say what they wanna say about people. I never cared. I always tell people that I just, you know, I look at their heart and what they wanna do. And as long as we do what we come to do, I don't have a problem with that. Um, yeah. when, I, when I came off of that, I think um, I probably was playing with um, the Youth for Christ Fellowship Choir here in the city. And also, um, they did a recording. Um, Mrs. Berkeley um, had, these, had these two brothers that came to her and said that they wanted to do a recording with their church choir down in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So Mrs. Berkeley sent me and Greg out there. And it was, I mean, it was a nice engagement but it was a very older and senior choir. And he only had about a few, I'll say they had a few people. They only had a few people. So um, we went and we practiced for about two months. And the day before the recording, the recording company, now this is stuff that I just learned since being in the gospel music workshop, being around all these you know, recording executives and everything. I learned this from them and I said, oh, so this doesn't sound right what you're telling me how y'all supposed to be doing this recording because they were going to do a recording with a whole bunch of other people. Like you come up, you do two songs, somebody else come up, they do two songs. I said, that don't sound right. So anyway, needless to say, they called us that night, the day before the recording because we were getting ready to come down to Fredericksburg Stay for the night, be ready for the recording next day. They said, well, they called and they canceled the recording. I said, did, did y'all pay him any money? Well, they told us we had to put a deposit down. I said, oh. I said, okay, so what do y'all want to do? So they called me back two hours later, said, you all still calm down. We're going to put you in a hotel. We're going to record tomorrow, but we're going to a studio. Now, I had done a little bit of studio work as a musician, but not as a producer. So I went back, I had to go back into what I knew and from the producers that I've talked to in GMWA up until that time. And I said, okay, so let's try to do this. And we went through, we did the recording. Now, again, I'm dating myself. The recording came out on cassette. They sold it out, which was great. But it played on one of our local radio stations, WHUR, for at least 12, if I want to say 13 years straight, they would always play one of their songs every Sunday on that radio station. So that was a blessing for me. Um, it was a family that um, I got to know. And one of the sons of the brothers, when we would come to the house for a rehearsal, he was playing on the piano. He was only about maybe eight or nine years old. And it's playing on one of them little toy pianos while we were playing actual music, right? So <laughs> that same young man turns around to be one of um, the DMV and really gospel music, greatest unsung hero and icons, which is Philip Carter. Philip Carter is somebody to be reckoned with. If you all don't know who he is, you need to look him up. Because Philip is, in fact, Philip just finished doing the IC, IG, IC, IC, oh Lord, Independent Gospel Artists Awards. I was trying to do the short acronym, but it ain't work. Um, and um, they just did their fourth award on Friday night, which was very good. 
I posted it on my Facebook page, but um, Philip has been um, phenomenal because he learned so much. And like I said, I knew him when he was young and we've been family and friends ever since. But God has just really um, blessed me. Um, when I worked down the Greater New Hope, I was working with Reverend uh, Emery Andrews and I played drums. Greg played bass. Uh, uh, Pastor um, Andrew um, uh, moved his ministry and he moved and was no longer minister of music. The pastor asked me, could I um, possibly come on and maybe teach the choirs, the youth choir, um, some songs for anniversary because their musician who was part of the Dorsey convention got sick. So I brought a keyboard player in, bass player was there. I brought in a drummer and I taught him a few songs. Now, mind you, I've never taught songs to choirs before, but I knew what to do because I've been singing still all my life. So taught the choir the songs, pastor liked it. Pastor Trey said, well, can you do the math? Could you direct the mass choir? So I said, okay. So then I started doing the mass choir and the youth choir. About a year and a half later, the pastor has a meeting with everyone and he says, hey, as of this day, Jimmy Russell is going to be our minister of music at this church. And I was there for eight years. Now, the thing of it is, I was still singing and playing drums at my church, my church choir, but then I had to make a decision and I talked to my choir director and I said to him, hey, um, I don't know what I'm gonna do about this because um, I'm stuck, you know, this is my home church. I'm supposed to do what I gotta do here, but yet I have an opportunity to do something different and grow. Mm -hmm. And my choir director, Raymond Brown said, go and grow. He said, we're still gonna be your home church until God tells you go elsewhere. So I said, okay, and that's what I stuck to. To this day, I'm still a member of the Bible Way Church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is now under um, Bishop Ronald L. Demery Jr. But um, back then, so for eight years, I was there with that church um, and their former minister of music, two, two minister of music before, uh, one minister of music before Emory was uh, Moye, Ulysses Moye, who is big in the Dorsey Convention. And um, he's a great uh, choir director and minister of music in the city. So I felt honored to be at his church where he developed the music department. And to me, I figured out that if you come in to somebody else's church to have something established, you learn what they have done. You look and listen to the people and then you just build upon it to make it a better program. You don't have to come in and yeah, you don't come in and tear up people's stuff. Take what they have and grow from it. That the thing of it is also the people have to want to see, want, want to grow and see that they need the growth. Mm -hmm. So um, I thank God for my eight years there. I was able to um, one year even have the, those in the music department to come to the God's Music Workshop of America. And it really opened their eyes up to music ministry in churches. Because a lot of churches don't have um, music uh, uh, workshops on a regular basis to teach the people and to inspire the people. You know, there's a lot you can do. And now people have expanded um, music ministry to be music and arts, which is a great thing. Because this, if you can't, if, if I can't sing or play a musician or, or instrument or do a lead, I could dance, I could do poetry, I could do mime. There's so much you can do that you can still exalt the Lord. And I learned all that at God's Music Workshop because we had so many people back then, you know. And so I'm going and I'm moving up. And so now I leave uh, Greater New Hope. I come back home to my home church and my choir director tells me I'm gonna be, um, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna be the drummer but I'm also going to be his assistant director. And at any given time, um, he would just call out a song and it would be a song I would have to direct, but there was no drummer. So I'm looking at him like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> needless to say, um, that's kind of where I was. And um, maybe about four or five years later, uh, the Lord took him home. And then I became the choir director over this choir. 
And this choir was called the Small Williams Chorale, Small E. Williams Chorale of Bible Way Church. And uh, we were named after our founder, Bishop Small Woody Williams. So we was his living legacy as we went and we sang. And we sang many places, um, not just in apostolic and Pentecostal churches, but around the city and around the country. We even went out um, as far as to um, Bishop uh, McMary's church um, in Los Angeles, California, and sang at a few churches out there. So we traveled a little bit around the city. So around that time, I kind of was doing a lot of traveling, which I never thought that I would actually be able to say and did. So I did a nine to five every day, um, rehearsals maybe once or twice a week with either the chorale or with DC chapter or with another group. And then on the weekend, mm -hmm. I'm gone. Excuse me, from Friday, I might make it back to my church on Sunday morning or to <laughs> Greater New Hope or not. But I was always gone, and that was like for about maybe about four or five years. So I was very grateful for that opportunity because it taught me a lot, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot of uh, uh, how to be a traveling musician, how to you know make sure that you uh, meet the call. If they tell you the bus is leaving at this time, you got to be on time. Um, bring your own instruments. Don't trust any church. I'm sorry to say this. You can't trust every church to have instruments like they're supposed to have them. And a lot of churches didn't. I could tell some horror mm -hmm. stories, but I don't want to get into it. In fact, Andre, <laughs> I remember one, but I, I'll just say it like this. Uh, uh, Bishop Woods and I was on the same concert with Keith Pringle, and we went to this church to have a concert. And this is the truth. Uh, Bishop Woods didn't even play. I think he played piano because there was no organ. I, I, I want to say that's what it was. And there was no bass amp. So my bass player, Greg Gibson, couldn't play. But there was a drum set. But it was held together. The toms were held on to the drum set with coat hangers. Every time I would hit the toms, they would swing out. Yeah. Boy. Luckily, I brought my own cymbals. Luckily, I brought my own snare and kick, which is my foot pedal. And um, I was able to play. I could only use one cymbal. The cymbal stand they had was actually two um, music stands that were put together with something that was up there to hold a piece of camber. And if you're a, a seasoned drummer, you know what camber cymbals look like and sound like, which is almost like playing on wet paper. So took that off, put the one cymbal on. So can you imagine I'm playing drums and I'm playing um, call him up. And as I'm playing call him up, as I'm hitting the cymbal, cause I only had one cymbal and I had to make that do for as a ride, as a everything. And Greg had to catch the cymbal and put it back in place before I would get to the next beat if I was gonna hit it. So those are the kind of situations I've been dealing with as a musician. <laughs> And uh, hey. <laughs> James Butch Galloway put me into the gospel's workshop at academic department. Let me tell you how he did this. So he, I came to the convention at uh, second or third year, um, and he brought me into his class. He said, this is what my class is about. So that was the first day. Second day, he said, this is what my class is about. The third day, he said, can you sit in for me, um, Jimmy, because um, I can't make class today. So I'm like, I guess. So I sat there and James Butch Galloway never showed back up to that class again. <laughs> he left me with his drum class. <laughs> That's Butch. That's what Butch yeah, did. Yeah. You know, I always tease him about that because yeah. I said, how do you, you leave me just hanging? So anyway. Yeah, man, I was getting ready to ask you, man, we, that's what we works out. We got we got some stories to tell, some yeah. reminiscing, and oh man, those rehearsals, those recordings. I mean, just the late nights, man. Now that's what I missed about the workshop, man. After everything was over, you know, clean Richard Bishop White would right. do his service on late Sunday night. Right. But the come as you are musicals was a highlight for me because with Reverend Norma Jean Pender. We would get there and 
We didn't know who was going to sing right. or what they was going to sing. Right. And most of them came without a musician. You know, they didn't came, know their key, didn't know they nothing. They came without you know, musician. No musician, no drummer, nothing. And they came straight off the bus or out the car. Yeah. That's why it was called Come As You Are. It's changed now. People come all dressed and everything, but people used to actually come yeah. as they were. And they would come up there and sing. And the musicianship then yeah. is so much different than musicianship now. Because if you went up there to sing, somebody would come out of the audience and start playing the organ. Then somebody else would come and get on the drums. Yeah, and catch you. And then somebody else would get up and they would get on the, somebody would get on, on the piano. And if there was a bass player there, he just walk in with what he got on and just plug in and find you. And I, I'm just saying that's what yeah. would happen. I, I miss those things. That's how we did, man. That's man. and then after all it was over with one or two o'clock in the morning, uh me and Quincy Fielding was talking about this the other day. I'm I'm gonna have him on next next Friday night. He's gonna be on with me. Uh, on, on spotlight on music, but man, we was talking about we would stay up to four, five o'clock in the morning, Rehearsing. just playing and fellowshipping and exchanging yep. musical ideas and talking about music, and then start the day all over again. You know, going to classes and going to uh, 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 the rehearsals. Yeah, and those was those were some learning days. Those were some mm. great fellowship days, and um, that's why I said most of us that come up through the workshop. I tell people all the time, that's how I got started, you know, traveling the country doing workshops, man, yep. because of Charles yep. Wall, Reverend Charles Nixon, Reverend Cleveland and them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, you 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 played on so many uh, uh, recordings with GNWA National Mass Choir, and yes. then night after night, day after day, you know, a lot of times I'd be sitting back, you know how we would sit around and, and share. Mm -hmm. But I saw you so many days, man, you know, people were coming looking for drummers. I mean, and there was a host of drummers, but they would always come get Jimmy Russell. The songwriters, when yeah. they submitted the, their songs, yeah. you know, they had the privilege to select, you know, who they wanted to play instruments, music, their music as far as piano, organ, bass, and drums, and man, I, I I saw the I saw how they did that, man. And you were, you were the pick of the pick. Well, I, you yeah. know what? I was just I was just honored and humbled, man. I in fact, it just used to blow my mind. Yeah, um, when they would get up and say, um, "Hey, Jimmy, um, I got this song, and um, I want to know, can you just play on it for me for the rehearsal?" So I'd be like, "Okay," because I don't know this song, right? But because I'm a drummer, and and this is the other thing. Excuse me. Yeah. I, I taught this in my um, in my um, drumming class, which is the beginning of go gospel drums. Because a lot of musicians, they when they start out, they don't really know the pieces of drums. You know what I'm saying? And I would tell them every time. I said, um, you got to really know the styles of gospel music. One thing about gospel music, and both of us have seen it and heard it even today. The style of gospel music has changed so drastically that you couldn't go play. But back then, when it was coming up, it was like, okay, I got to find a song that kind of fit this. Okay, I got the feel of the song. Now let me just learn the details of it. And I was mm -hmm. always on it when they would do stuff like that. And I would walk in. I remember um, I was thinking um, Calvin Bernard Rome did a song, and he asked me to play on it. And I was like, huh? In fact, he put together a group one night. I'll never forget it at the convention. He asked me to play, and he asked uh, Freddie Washington to play. He asked a whole bunch of different musicians from all around the country to come together and play. He had Donnie Harper singing. He had a whole bunch of other people singing because he wanted to show the diversity of the Gospel Music Workshop of America. And I never forgot that and never forgot him for that. And he, he, you know, he had a song. He said, yeah, play on my song. And I played on this song. I was so humble. All, all of the songwriters that would even ask me, would ask me over and over again, I would just say, I just couldn't believe it. I would thank them. Yeah. And I mean, I was very grateful. Now, back then, some songwriters would bless you and some songwriters wouldn't. But the great thing about um, playing with the Gospel Music Workshop of America, and I, I'm very proud to say, 
is that one, uh, GMWA Mass Choir was the first choir, first one to show the world how a mass choir could do a recording and it be effective yeah. with only a few days of rehearsal. Yeah. You understand what I'm so saying? Just a week. I mean, just a few days. A you know. few days because by Thursday, we are practicing what we did Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And Friday, it's a wrap because it's now a recording. It's time to record, yeah. And that's why I would that's tell my did. Yeah, we ain't we ain't no choice. Like, yo, we got to get this done, regardless of what the yeah. situation is. You know, back then, drummers used to switch out and switch out, record about snares, change cymbals, and all that stuff. As time grew, it was like, nope, one kick, one snare, <laughs> one set of cymbals, one drum set. We're not doing all that because we're trying to yeah. get you know, better at what we've done. And right, I right. loved how it sounded. The sound of a thousand, two thousand, and in a couple of years, three thousand yeah. people singing is a yeah. sound that you can never forget. You can't forget it, man. But but listen, listen, man. Uh, uh, go back, go back just, just real quick because uh, we were talking about Keith Pringle in that tour. I mean, the the precision that Keith exercised and uh, shared with us about about his 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 playlist, what he wanted, song to song, how to go from song to song, song to song. And uh, Keith worked on the road, man. I used to get so nervous because he was so just like a, a, a ever ready bunny, man. He oh was my just God, was he? Off the walls. I mean, just energetic, and it enthused us. And I tell people all the time, you know, that's that's one reason. Why I end up starting my group because I said, hey, we sound so good together. We came home and said, let's stay together and do something. And that's how Chosen was born. A lot mm -hmm. of folks didn't know that. But but let's talk about your productions, man. Your your my, own personal group, man. How they got I, started. Okay, so how we got started was that um Brady New Hope Baptist Church had a, a youth choir called the Flossie Jane Hamilton Ensemble named after their former pastor's um, wife. She loved the youth of the church and she started, and they, so, they, so one of the musicians, Junior Johnson, started a choir called the Flossie Jane Hamilton Ensemble, or they used to call them the Flossie Jays. So when I took over as the minister of music at Greater New Hope at that time, um, I had the youth choir and I had the, um, the mass choir. And I had other musicians that were over the male course, the senior choir. I let all those musicians do their job. And I tried to make sure that I could assist them wherever I could. But with the Flossie Jays, that was a youth choir that was like young people. And what the Lord allowed me to do was to bring some continuity to their singing and to the way that they thought about ministry. Because a lot of them, they didn't think, a lot of them there are great preachers, singers, recording artists. They're great in everything that they do, but they learn through that one choir during the time that I had them because we learned to do some things that no one else could do. Um, oh man, there's a song called uh, Hallelujah Praise that we did from a choir in um, Buffalo, New York. Um, and um, this particular song was about nine minutes long it was a collection of a whole bunch of praise and worship songs. Plus they were done, a couple of the songs were done in African dialect. I taught it to the choir for us to do. And I think they learned it in two days, the whole song. So when I talked to my friend who did the recording, he said, man, that thing took us two months to learn. I said, two months? He said, yeah, it took us about two weeks to learn the African dialect. Then it took us all this time to, you know, because the, the uh, producer had was taking him out there. And my choir learned that thing in two days. We There was a contest that um, Don Edwards Mill, I don't know if you remember him from WYCB. He put on this contest through his uh, production company and the winners would go to Bobby Jones to record in Miami, Florida. So we went, we won the contest and we went to Miami, Florida and we recorded. Well, after we recorded, then um, 
when we finished that afternoon, I was walking by myself, just reflecting on what God had done, because I was amazed that we won. And um, God spoke to me and he said, you know what, I want you to bring together a group of people that are going to be different. They're not going to be like everyone else, but they really are going to hold a standard and they're going to be peculiar. I said, hmm, okay. So I talked to some of my young people in, a fly, in the Flossie Jane Hamilton Ensemble, and I said, so the Lord is leading me to start a group of singers outside of a choir. I said, but what would I call them? And as they were, we all were talking, one of the girls said, her name is uh, uh, Katrina, uh, Katina, excuse me, um, Tillery. That's her married name now, but it was Williams then. And she said, well, what about it's because of Christ? I said, you know what? I like that. So let's keep that. So that's what I started my group with. It was just called Because of Christ. But the only thing of it was, as I was doing that, I started thinking and I said, well, see, people are not going to know who is because of Christ. So me, knowing a little bit of music and a little bit of business in the gospel music and music field, I yeah. said, I'm going to have to probably tag my name on here for a minute. Let me just put my name on it. Then people say, oh, well, that's Jimmy's group. Let me check it out. Mind you now, I'm known now as a choir director. Mind you now, I'm now known as one of the, you know, one of the, premier drummers or one of the icons around um, DC and gospel music, right? Some places, not every place, but just some places. And um, so that's what people know me for. So now I get to go back to what I first started out with, singing. I've been singing since I was five or six years old. So I started a group of singers and I asked some people to come and join me. And as time went on, and as you know, and anybody that anybody that knows anything about a group or a choir, everything is not going to be permanent. Some people and some things are for a season. And when it is, people move on, other people come and take their place. So I'm listening and listening and people recording and recording and listening and listening. And the Lord spoke to me one day when I was sitting at somebody's recording. He said, it's time for you to record. And I'm like, what? I said, but God, I don't know if I know all. He said, it's time for you to record. It's time for you to record. Just do it. So I went and I brought it to the group. I said, hey, y'all, this time next year, we're going to have to record. And he was like, what? So I had to go and try to pick a producer. Um, I picked uh, John Tillery to be our first uh, producer. And uh, John worked with us on a lot of stuff for about two months. And we came out with that first recording, Jimmy Russell and Because of Christ Live. And um, again, I'm learning more about the production side of uh, recording, the things that have to be done. Yeah. Um, oh, man. And uh, that, was just, that was just a phenomenal thing. But from that, God just opened up a whole lot of doors for us. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I'm going to call out Philip Carter's name. He started this um, 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 uh, CD. He put out a CD of collaboration of all uh, DMV artists. That's um, the District of Columbia, Maryland, Virginia. So we call ourselves the DMV. So he asked a whole bunch of artists, independent artists. Um, we're going to all put all our recordings together in one CD. And we're going to market it and put it out and, you know, just to see how it does. It was a great recording and it was a great idea and it did well it did well mm. um but it gave us more avenue to open up and to go more places not just in the area but we've been called a few different places to come and sing down um, um south carolina and new jersey for craig hayes i know we went up there to sing for him and um the lord spoke to me even um when i got my next group of singers that he said, hey, you need to go out to the West Coast. So out to the West Coast, we went. Now, this one, when we did that, nobody invited us. But because I had GMWA family, I asked. Calvin Rohn said I could sing at his church. 
Um, what's my brother that just passed? He was over the evangelistic board. I can't think of his name right now. Um, was a uh, James Cleveland singer. Gene, Gene, uh, yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah. Right, right. I can't think of his name right now. So y'all please forgive me for those who know who I'm yeah. talking about. But he allowed us to come to his ministry. And then we had another church that um, Herbert uh, Jones helped us get. And we sang at Estes. So we had a couple of places to sing there that year. And God took us out there and did, did well. So, you know, and we've been singing ever since. We've been singing at uh, Philip Carter and um, 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 uh, for the conference that he has. We've sung at GMW8 a few times. And then the Lord just spoke to my heart again, said, oh, he said, okay, it's time to do it again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, just last year, we released the single, um, When Jesus Comes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's on all the um, digital uh, platforms, and you can download it anywhere. You can get it, you know, it's on YouTube. But um, it's a song that was done that my mother wrote in the 50s. And they used to sing it at Bible Way. Uh, with the gospel chorus. And when my mother saw that I really loved music at an early age, she gave me the sheet music. She said, take this and do whatever you want to do with it. Okay. So I held on to it. And I, I was really kind of scared and nervous. But then when I had the opportunity to record, I didn't get a chance to put it on my first recording. So this time I made it a priority out of all the songs that I would put on my recording. I definitely would put this song on my recording. Yeah. I also put another song on my first recording, um, which was to honor uh, Mrs. Uh, Shirley K. Berkeley, M.K. Berkeley, yeah. which was, um, I will bless the Lord at all times. And um, she loved it and others have loved it. So it's a song that we sing out. But my mother's song is a nice little churchy tune. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, and I should have sent it to you. I, I don't know what I was thinking about, but anyway, <laughs> it's on. Um, it's on. Um, like I said, all the digital platforms. Um, when Jesus comes is the name of the song, and um, I have a, a wonderful soloist, Jacqueline Hawkins. She is doing the lead, and um, I'm, I got some more music that I'm working on even now. We're just doing the final mix on some stuff. Pandemic threw me back a little bit, but some other issues. Um, really threw me back. And that's the other thing I want to encourage anybody. If you're doing a recording, uh, take your time. Don't rush. Um, even if you, you know, if you A-listing or you're on a record company, then they got a certain time you got to get this done, but they're going to do the things you're going to have to do. But when you're an independent artist, you have to do this, but you want to make sure that you do it right, that you're it right. sounds right, that it's mixed right, you know, that it's going to have the right vibe. Um, my good friend and brother who I've known forever, like I knew Hezekiah, uh, David uh, Frazier said, you know, this is a funny uh, business that you can spend five and $6,000 on marketing. You can spend, uh, or really more than that, 10 or 20,000 on marketing. Um, you can spend about 25, uh, 30,000 on recording. You do all of that, place your, you know, your ads and your things everywhere and you still might not get to where you want. So the one thing that I had purposed myself that when I started recording with my group, and even when I was with the youth choir and they were singing, I told them, look, I got my own fame and glory, but I want you all to see what God can do. And they saw it. They saw it and they were amazed at how God would show up. I'm going to get this small story and I'm going to give this back to you, Drake. Look, when Thomas Whitfield passed, which you knew blew me away, all of us. Yeah. So we came up that weekend, my friend Wydell Crooms, myself, and Brian Spriggs. And what I thought was so crazy, we got there at the wake at, um, what was Greater the wake? Grace. Right, right. It was at Greater Grace. And we got there, by the time we came from D.C., we had drove up and we got there maybe about an hour or two hours before it, it let out. And um, so we went, you know, went to sleep, got up, came to the funeral and everyone, but all three of us broke down and cried because we knew Thomas. We had knew him because he, um, he was the producer for Thomas, um, I mean, for Donald Vale's recording um, um, and Salvation Corporation live yeah. at Crampton Auditorium. 
And right. um, so we were good friends. I knew Tommy. I know you knew him and everything. But when he passed, it really took a lot. And yeah. it's the first time I ever met anybody. And I just talked to my wife about this today, about meeting people and how, how they affect you. Um, Thomas Whitfield is the first musician that I've ever known in gospel music that when he passed, and I'm talking about out of all the other people passed, your pastor passed him, um, Reverend Cleveland passed and a lot of people. When Thomas Whit Whitfield passed, I could not for almost 10 years utter his name because if I did, I would start crying. When musicians used to talk about great musicians, yeah. when they talked about Thomas Whitfield, some people say, look, man, we got, we got to change the subject. And other musicians who didn't know would say, why? And other musicians say, yeah, let's talk about something else. Well, what's right. wrong with Thomas Whitfield? There's nothing wrong with him. But if we talk, and I was amazed how Tommy, he messed a lot of people up that they could not talk about or even say his name because of how good and great he was as a musician and as a yeah. minister and what he taught. His heart for ministry was something that you could not help but get in you. And that got in me. Because I know I had a few times that I was kind of down. <laughs> I remember one time at GMWA, I saw him. And he came and he sat and he ministered to me. I yeah. never forgot that. That's Tommy, man. That's... I never forgot that, how he did that. And um, I was sitting on the steps. And you know how crowded it used to be at the, at the convention? Uh, and I'm talking about in New Orleans. So, you know, it's a zillion people walking back and forth. Thomas walked by. He said, Jimmy, how you doing? I said, I'm okay. He said, no, you're not. He said, come on, let's go over and sit down and talk. And he helped me. Yeah. I, and, I, and this was something that was dealing with music ministry. So I want to encourage people, you know, sometimes it's going to get you, even like this pandemic that we've gotten through, but don't give up. Right, right. Well, man, this up you mentioned that that recording because of the only reason I was there, you know, oh, with, right. with Donald Donald Wells really. because Tommy was was scheduled to be somewhere, right? And uh, he said, "Man, I need I need an organist in D.C. for this recording." And he called right. me, right? And he called a record company, man. And uh, next thing I know, I was in D.C. You know, working with uh, all of you guys, Ricky right. Payton, uh, Danny, right? Ricky. Danny, Danny McCreary, right. and Donald. Right. Ben, I mean, that whole crew, that whole setup, man. Yeah. I mean, it was it was such a wonderful, great experience. You know that um, that he thought so much of me. But I know what you're saying. I'm I'm still like that today, Doc. When it comes to, you know, like now we got Facebook and all this stuff. Sometimes mm -hmm. I I don't even. I don't even respond when I see, you know, I don't even want to comment. I don't want to do nothing. I just, I just need my time to remember and reflect because what you're talking about, what happened to you in, in, in New Orleans, mm -hmm. I mean, we had the privilege, myself, Rudy, right. Gregory, and those of us that work uh, here in, the, in, in, in home to go to his house right, and sit, you know, and, and just talk, talk, talk. You know, go to a house, go to the restaurant. Just man, I, I know what you're saying. So you know, it was it was really a shock to to all of us when that happened, and uh, he still missed and gonna be missed. Yes. yes, 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 that, yes. There shall not, there shall never be another. I always you know, always love it when I hear somebody does a song, and if they throw a Whitfield chord or whatever running there. That thing still goes through me. I was like, oh. Oh, yeah, you can't help but say yeah. that's a Whitfield influence. Right. <laughs> I mean, he impacted music. I yeah. mean, just overall. All right, we ain't going to start talking about that. Let's let's move on. But, but listen, man, this is what I want you to do. I, I certainly appreciate you have articulated your story so and and given us history that, that most folk probably didn't even know or were aware of of step by step of how God blessed you, you know, in phases to get where you are and why you are Jimmy Russell, uh, uh, the drummer, the writer, the producer, uh, uh, the performer and all that you do. I want you to take a moment before we leave and uh, give some, some encouraging words to 
this generation of musicians and you know inspired them and uh just just speak from your heart because a lot of these young musicians you know they look at church as a gig or you know they they get frustrated because you know they don't know what we're talking about because we've been trying to bridge the gap between our yeah. generation and their generation and they think we just old school we don't know what we're talking about but here's the thing i tell them but well, we're still here and we're still relevant right. you know so i want you to speak from your experience that you can share something with uh of this generation today well, I would just like to say I want to encourage uh, any younger musicians, and um, I'm not talking about like if you're like 19 or 20, even if you're 20, 30, 40 years old, you know, and you're still um, going on in um, the music ministry. And y'all, it is a music ministry. Um, yeah, gig is a is a cute word, but sometimes you don't always get blessed by um, just what gets paid. I understand. Trust me. You know, bills have to be paid. And some people in ministry don't always think of that. But the biggest thing I ask that you do is just find yourself in the Lord. I found that there were so many musicians that used to look at things as gigs. But once they found a relationship with Jesus Christ, it changed from being a gig to really being ministry. Um, if you're a musician and you're playing at a church, um, I, I've told my pastor this. Musicians are checking out churches and pastors, like pastors are checking out musicians all the time. Because as a musician, you get more of the word than anybody else. Because you're sitting in all those services. You know where all those scriptures are. You know where all those healings are. You understand what God wants, but it has to be for you to give your life to the Lord. I encourage my, um, my drummers in the uh, gospel music workshop and as little kids i tell them when you do this you do this as unto the lord god's going to open doors for you that you will never ever see coming i have a list of people that have been in my class that god has blessed as far as to be a professor in percussions only because they understood what has to be done in this day and time even during this pandemic i'm asking that you pray and ask God to lead and guide you to where you need to go to minister. And while you're there doing just your job of ministering on drums, don't think that just because you're a drummer, uh, nobody will pay attention to you because you'll be surprised how many people will come up to you and say, you know what, you blessed me today. Now you wasn't a soloist, you wasn't a choir, you wasn't an organist, you wasn't a pianist, you wasn't a bass player, but just on the drums, you can be a blessing. On the piano, you can be a blessing. On the organ, you can be a blessing. But the thing of it is, focus on what the ministry is. Don't just take this as a side gig, you know, until I get to where I am. Because when you talk to all the big R&B musicians, when you talk to all the ones that have done arias and playing for symphonies and everything, you talk to most of them. Most of the top R&B artists, musicians, all come from church. They all have and know and understand who God is. And I ask you on today that if you haven't, think about it. I'm not going to push you to it, but think about what you want God to do for you as you play for his glory, because it is a gift. I encourage you that when you find someone that you like their style or that they find an interest in you, especially if they're more seasoned like myself, I have a couple of little brothers that I always sow into. Find you someone that you can talk to and you all can relate. The stories that they will share with you and the things that they will, can show you will, will greatly help you in so many areas, in music, in your life, and also in just being a musician in church and in out of church, a studio musician. All of that stuff you have to learn, but it's gonna to have to take you putting yourself before the Lord and really asking him to help you. So don't get mad when the older musicians say, oh, you don't even know a hymn. You know what you do? You go and find a hymn and learn it. Or ask them, well, show me the hymn that you think I should learn. You get what I'm saying? Don't cut it off because we all need each other. Just like the song that David Frazier wrote, we all need each other to survive. 
I'm going to pour out as much as I can to any musician that wants to hear me and that can until I leave this earth. And what I leave with them, they are going to pass it on, which some of them are doing right now, to other musicians. And that's how we have to do this. The same thing with you, Bishop Woods, you have sown into thousands of other organists and keyboard players and musicians and directors. And that's what we have to do in the body. We have to sow into each other and we have to have fellowship. There's nothing wrong with learning something new, but it's also nothing wrong with learning something older. You would be surprised for those that's trying to quote unquote, you know, play the gig. I got something for you. You really want to make the money in the church? Learn some of those hymns and some of those older songs. Watch how your doors will open. And you can still keep your current right now, but it will bless you. Thank you, uh, Bishop. Oh, man, that, that was priceless. That was priceless. I appreciate you, man, my brother. Listen, please uh, inform everybody how they can reach you and get a hold of your projects, your, your CDs and everything, how, your, your email, all, all, all your outlets, your platforms. All my Let platforms. Us know. Okay, yeah. so uh, my platforms, um, you can get in touch with us at um, Russell House Music, which is Aura H-M-L-L-C at gmail.com. Excuse me. You also can get in touch with us on Facebook, Jimmy Russell in BOC. If you don't see my face on it, it's not me, okay? I'm just letting you know. I have two Facebook pages. One says about, um, as of currently, as of right now, one is talking about I've gotten um, my shots and the other one is plain, but both of them you will see. In fact, see this, this picture here? That's the picture you will probably see with me and in, 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 uh, on Facebook. We're also on Instagram under Jimmy and BOC. We're on Twitter, Jimmy and BOC. We also have a website, www.jimmyandboc.com. Again, you can find our music on um, Google, uh, Amazon, you can find it in uh, Apple. Uh, you can find it on all digital platforms. Um, you know how, how our music is, uh, Bishop Woods. I see that my CD is selling for $21 in somebody's country. I, I don't know how that works, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, right. And Thank cool. God for the foreign market, though. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> and you can also just Google Jimmy Russell in BOC or and BOC because of Christ. That's the name of the group. Um, not Jimmy Russell, the distiller, not those other Jimmy Russells, just Jimmy Russell and BOC. And you'll be able to find us there. Um, if you um, want us to come to your um, conventions, to your morning service, uh, to your choir's anniversary, um, you know, whatever it is that you may need, um, we can surely try to help you out, even if it comes to recording Russell House music under Jenny Boy's production can also be an assistant to you and your ministry. And, um, you know, we do whatever we can to help you to push your ministry forward and to whatever it is that you may need from us. Um, you pray for us as we're about to finish um, the mixes and the masters on this uh, second and um, our second CD. Um, I haven't even come up with a name of it yet because I know what I thought it was going to be, but God has been dealing with me what the name is going to be. So, and again, the single is called uh, "When Jesus Comes," and you can find that on all digital platforms. Um, and if you cannot add yourself to my Facebook page because we are crowded on at least one of them, just inbox me, and I will be make 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 sure that I get right back to you. Amen. Thank you, man. Thank you. Well, friends, I thank you for joining us today for this edition of This Is My Story with my good friend and brother, Jimmy Russell. Man, you have blessed us today with so much information, and I'm sure you're going to uh, get some feedback and some calls that's going to be all positive. Listen, uh, what I want to do, I want to pray for you, man, and then we'll be out for the day. 
Uh, we were gonna, I tried not to keep them too long, but this was so good, man. I didn't want to miss an ounce or a second of what you were uh, sharing with us because I believe uh, it is so important that we be able to impact this generation. You know, I've been telling folk, you know, we were once students, yeah. and now we're becoming the fathers. You know, we're becoming the ones that are becoming the mentors and the tutors and, and the teachers. So thank God uh, for longevity, how he's kept you. And so we want to utter this word of prayer. Father, we thank you today for this privilege of fellowship with my brother, Jimmy Russell. And I ask you now, God, to keep him as the apple of your eye. I pray Psalms 90 and 17 upon his life. Now, God, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon him. Establish the work of his hands. Yea, thou establish the work of his hands upon him and be blessed in all that his hands shall ever touch. Thank you, God, for what you've done in him, with him, and through him all of these years. And we pray now for continued success that you will continue to go before him make easy and successful his way and all that he does in music for your glory. And we pray, God, whatever his heart's desire might be, whatever the need is, God, I pray you will meet every need according to your riches and glory, God, and then bless him continually, he and his household, his family, and bless his group, bless his music ministry as he continued to reach out and impact people all over the world and we'll be so careful to give your name, glory, honor, and praise. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Amen. Man, Amen. Bless you, man. Thank, thank you, you for spending this time with your brother on thank a Sunday you. afternoon. Anytime, anytime. You know. All right, man. Well, listen, friends, you heard it right here with Bishop Andreas Woods. Join us the rest of this month. We've got some special interviews coming. Consult my pages for our next interview. We'll see you next Sunday, same time, 4 p.m. for This Is My Story. Bishop Andre Woods saying, I love all of you with the love of Christ, and I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. Bless you, Jimmy. We'll talk soon, man. I promise. God bless.